Hello folks. Today I'm going to attempt to show you how to make a water distiller using a pressure cooker, a stainless steel coil, a six gallon bucket, a carbon filter, and some norprene tubing along with some miscellaneous fittings. So all of the items that you see there on the table I purchased on the internet for about $115 minus the pressure cooker. I already had that. We're borrowing the wife's cookware. You actually have enough equipment here to make two distillers. There is 50 feet of stainless steel coil. You probably only need about 20 feet. And the Norprene tubing, that is an FDA food grade tube that is safety rated up to 275 degrees so it can handle our steam. We only need about four or five feet of that and the smallest length that I was able to purchase was 10 feet. So if you buddy up with another prepper, you should be able to put two of these together, divide up the cost, and only be out of pocket around $60. That is much cheaper than the $200 to $400 water distillers on the internet. So I'm going to take you through the process uh, as I build one of these so you'll see what works and what I have challenges with. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is cut that stainless steel coil in half because again I don't need 50 feet, I only need about 20. The other thing, uh, purchased it on the internet, it said it was a 8 inch diameter coil that was 10 inches high. <laughs> it's actually a 10 inch coil that is 8 inches high and that's a little bit large for my 6 gallon bucket. So in addition to cutting the coil in half, we have to tighten the coil up and we also have to spread the coil out so we get more of a vertical run to encourage the water to flow through the tube as it's condensing. So I'm going to go do those tasks and take you along for the ride. So using the unscientific method of finding the center of the coil, just count up the number of wines, divide in half, move to the middle and mark it with a sharpie. Doesn't necessarily need to be exact, just so you end up with half of one and half of the other. A Dremel cutting wheel makes short work of cutting the stainless steel coil in half. Some of you may wonder why I'm using stainless steel instead of copper. That's because I read that distilled water can be somewhat acidic and will leach the copper out of your copper pipe, and so stainless steel is recommended. Not sure if that's true, but hey. The next step is to wind my coil tighter because it's a little bit large sitting in the bucket. Now that we have the condensing coil wound down a bit, the next step is to drill several holes in the six gallon bucket. One hole will be for the faucet that allows us to pull warm water out of the six gallon bucket so we can add in more cool water and two more holes for the condensing coil to go in and out of the bucket. So one second while I get those drilled, I'll come back when I have it all done. So here is the bucket with all the holes drilled in it. You see the faucets in place. You see the one stainless steel coil coming out of the upper left and the bottom right of the bucket. Notice I'm using the Norprene tubing kind of as a gasket around the stainless steel tube. Hopefully that will protect my bucket from the heat and help keep the bucket from leaking. The last step is to connect up the carbon filter to the output. You will need some fittings for this and also cut a length of hose to connect your pressure cooker to the input on your steel coil. So one second while I hook all that up and then I will show you what it looks like. So here's what the finished product theoretically looks like. Comes out of the pressure cooker through the hose, connected with the hose clamp, goes down to the bucket and the condensing coil comes out of the condensing coil through the carbon filter and then through a tiny little tube and hopefully ends up down at a pitcher. This is the hope. We will test it and show you how all of that works out and how efficient it is. How much water do we get out for a certain amount of time cooking? 